Hello, and welcome to Complexity Limits Guy for their Hoag Mount Encounter. Written and produced by Crazy Puck in coordination with Complexity Limit. Mount alternates between two phases based on his mana pool. Various abilities throughout the fight cause him to gain mana. When he reaches 100% mana, he'll enter phase 2. During this phase, you'll deal damage to his mana pool instead of his health pool. And then once his mana reaches 0, you'll re-enter phase 1. You'll rinse and repeat back and forth between phase 1 and phase 2 until you kill the boss. You'll want to begin the encounter right where Mount is standing, and we also recommend using Bloodlust at the start. The tank should face him sideways. Mainly DPS should stand on the boss's side, facing towards the middle of the room. He'll periodically cast an ability called Black Wings, which is a frontal knockback, and it's targeted at the location of a random melee player. He's casting it again, and he's gonna kill himself. Look how long take. Oh, are you off the edge? Who's... Oh my god. By having the melee already positioned on the boss's side, you'll bait this ability towards the middle of the room, making it easier for the melee to move out and also preventing your range from ever having to worry about it. The rest of the raid should be standing behind the boss, so they don't have to worry about this ability. He'll regularly cast an ability called Devour Magic, which is debuff placed on four players. After six seconds, these four players are going to explode and leave a purple puddle wherever they are when it does explode. You'll want to drop these puddles towards the outer edges of the room. Standing in the puddles from Devour Magic will hurt you, silence you, make you unable to be healed, but also make you immune to taking magic damage. Because of this, the only time you want to stand in these puddles is during Stygian Annihilation, which is denoted by an animation the boss does that looks like he's drawing in power. You'll need to stand in a puddle during this cast. Dot them until the very... Well, it kind of makes for taunt swaps, but it should be fine. Get in, 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 get in. Do not stand in the big purple swirly effect caused by Dark Manifestation. When it explodes, an ad will spawn directly in the middle of it. The tank who's not holding mount needs to grab the ad and tank it near a puddle, but at least 20 yards away from the boss. When it casts its ability Dark Offering, you're going to need to pull it into the puddle that it's standing next to until that cast finishes, and then pull the ad back out of that puddle. Your raid shouldn't hard swap to kill the ads. Instead, range DPS should dot up the ad, but primarily stay focused on DPSing down the boss. When a new ad spawns, the tank with the ad already should run to Mount and taunt him. Mount will eat the old ad when it gets too close to him. The tank who had previously been holding the boss will need to pick up the newly spawned ad, and like before, this ad will need to be tanked 20 yards away from the boss or more, standing directly next to a puddle. It'll still need to be pulled into a puddle when it casts Dark Offering. You'll do this for ads number 1 and 2. The tank who picks up ad number 3 when it spawns is going to hold this ad until the boss's mana is 95% or higher. At that point, you're going to drag this ad directly underneath the boss, which will force him to eat it. After he eats his third ad, you'll enter phase 2. Phase 2 is a burn phase, with all the damage you deal being dealt to Mount's mana pool instead of his health pool. Additionally, all damage you deal to the boss will be replicated and reflected back to you. Because of this, healers are going to want to rotate their raid cooldowns during this phase. You have 60 seconds to get his mana to zero from the time you begin this phase, or you wipe. The tanks are going to want to soak the mana orbs that spawn from the sides of the room as quickly as possible. After you soak the orb, you'll get a debuff that lasts for 6 seconds. When the debuff ends, you'll explode, and anyone near you will get a buff, increasing their healing and their mana regeneration. You're going to want to drop this on your healers, because anytime the healers get a healing and mana regeneration buff during a phase when everyone's taking a boatload of damage, it's just going to be a good thing for you. Healers are also going to need to dispel the Drain Essence debuff on the targeted players as soon as possible, but make sure those players are 8 yards away from other people before you dispel. Once Mount's mana hits 0, you'll re-enter phase 1. You'll then go back and forth between phase 1 and phase 2 until the boss dies. Thanks for watching. We hope you found the guide helpful. If you'd like more details on this encounter or how it works, please click the link below to our written guide. Make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel. You can also find the rest of our Nihilotha boss guides right here on our channel or at complexity.gg. For more content like this, follow Complexity on Twitter and subscribe to their YouTube channel. To keep up with Limit's Race for World First, follow them on Twitter. Happy reading!